Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video, doing GMA Friday for today's first video. So as I was on a Friday, we've got your monthly look ahead, and this will take us just about into May. Uh, can you believe? So uh, have a look at GMA first of all, and then we'll have a look at CFSB2, and we'll compare the two and see what, if any, trends we can find for the next uh, four weeks. Coming up later on, we'll have the regular week's 10-day uh, video update. I can tell you that the Gals Worthy's April forecast is going to be the first video up tomorrow. That'll be the first video up up uh, tomorrow morning. Right, so let's get on with it then. I'm going to start off with the GMA 500 millibar height anomalies from the North Pole view down. So this is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere just here. And then of course got the wider Arctic around here. And then we've got the middle latitudes through there. So uh, blue is extrapolating to um, below average heights, which is uh, low pressure. Yellow, orange and red extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. These are break down to week periods. The first week period will take us from the 3rd through to the 10th of April. So the coming week has a lot of low pressure in the Atlantic. We are very close to being very unsettled again in uh, the week ahead. But we do also have this ridge of above average heights sitting over and to the east of the country. And with the jet stream, it leaves us doing something a little bit uh, like that. So pushing the jet stream northwards, we're close to a ridge of high pressure. You would expect quite a bit of dry weather to be in with that. And of course, as the air is pushing up from the southwest to south, it should also be relatively mild, if not potentially uh, quite warm, actually. Uh, week two looks very good if you want dry, settled spring weather. This is taking us from the 10th through to the 17th of uh, April. It also covers the Easter period, of course. And the JMA is going for high pressure big time. A large area of above average heights is centred right over the top of the country with below average heights to the north and to the west. So jet stream again is being pushed northward. So that looks mainly dry and settled and potentially you would have thought quite warm. Might be a bit chilly by night as the high pressure is centred over the top of the country, but certainly by day in the April sunshine, that should produce um, very pleasant uh, warm conditions. And no real change for weeks three and four either, really. This is from the 17th of April to the 1st of May. And overall, the model is still seeing an area of above average heights to be centred pretty much over top of the country. Below average heights again out to the north and to the west. Jet stream again is being pushed northwards like that. So a very settled April coming up, if this is right. A lot of dry, um, potentially quite warm weather on offer. Bear in mind that's a two-weekly anomaly, so it might be transitional. You can't rule out the chance that by the time you get through to week four, for example, it could be turning a little bit more unsettled. But as a two-weekly anomaly, obviously it looks like high pressure is dominating uh, the weather there. So this is how the tropical and middle latitude view uh, is looking, and we confirm, and we can confirm uh, those um, uh, interpretations with the temperature and precipitation uh, anomaly. So this is a reminder of a week one 500 millibar height anomaly taking us from the 3rd to the 10th of April. The British Isles in the top right hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. Uh, so we have the, in this week, we have the above average height sitting just about to the south, southwest of the country. But we have got a deep, southeast country, we have got a deep area of low pressure to the west and to the southwest. Jet stream is pushing north. We can't see, like, the Arctic and Scandinavia and Greenland, all of that sort of area. That's off the chart up here. And, of course, we can look at that view down so we know what's going on. We also see the area of above average heights here across many central parts of Europe as well. Winds should be coming up from a south to southwest direction, so you would have thought... It is likely to be pretty mild, and that's what the uh, uh, temperature anomaly is showing. Above average temperatures coming up this week, not just the UK, but through many parts of Europe and many parts of uh, America as well, looking quite warm in the week ahead. It's actually a little bit more unsettled than you might have thought, given the 500 millibar height anomaly. I mean, you would think that northern western areas will probably still be quite unsettled, because it's got a deep area of low pressure in the Atlantic, but it is still actually going for above average precipitation, even down across the south southeast. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure it's going to be as wet as that in uh, the week ahead. I think the model is overdoing the precipitation there uh, to some degree, especially for more southern and eastern parts of the country. Week two is the 10th to the 17th of April, and then we have the above average heights right over top of the country. So temperature anomalies remain above average by around one to two degrees. Uh, so yes, it's a mild spring type week coming up. 
Uh, but on, on the precipitation side, it's uh, drier than average as well now. So that area of high pressure becomes centered over top of UK and Ivan. And we do go drier there also. So mild and dry through the middle part of April, which of course does encompass the Easter period. And then week three and four takes us from the 17th of April to the 1st of May. And we have high pressure then centered over top of the country. So once more, we're looking at plenty of dry weather with that, you would have thought. Temperature anomalies have come down a little bit. They are only slightly above average, average to slightly above. Uh, precipitation anomalies are still dry and average as well there from the 17th of April to the 1st of May. So it's a drier uh, it's dry couple of weeks in the second half of April. Not quite as warm, but even so, the high pressure centre over the country expect above average temperatures, particularly by day. So overall, the JMA is definitely going for a very anti-cyclonic uh, April. Let's see what the CFSB2 has to say. So again, these are 500 millibar heights, so we have broken down into weekly periods. The first week period will take us from the 3rd to the 9th of April, the coming week with the above average heights over to the east and southeast of the country, below average heights out to the northwest, jet streams doing something like that, and the flow. So we're bringing the wind up from the south-southwest, it should be quite mild, uh, but low pressure is just out to west of us, so it could be unsettled, especially so for the northern and western parts of the country. Uh, then week two, which is the 10th to the 16th of April, the CFS has a high pressure centering over top of the country. So very much in line with what the JMA is showing, really, for weeks one and for weeks two as well, uh, with high pressure becoming centered pretty much over the top of uh, Western Europe. Week three is a little bit different compared to what the JMA was showing. This is the 17th to 23rd of April. The above average heights then pull out to the northwest of the country. Um, so it's still anti-cyclonic, probably still quite dry. We've got below average heights to ourselves, and we could be pulling in some cooler winds from uh, the sort of northeast or east. And of course, with low pressure just to our south, um, we will have to watch out for some thundery rain, perhaps affecting more southern parts of the country. I mean, a rather strange looking uh, chart for week four, which is the 24th uh, to the 30th of April. We lose all of the high pressure and the low pressure. We've got a trough to the north of Scandinavia. Hints perhaps of a little bit of northern blocking up here towards Greenland. Uh, but otherwise, not much else going on, so you can't <laughs> you can't really uh, interpret that uh, very well. We'll just see what temperature and precipitation anomaly is showing uh, there in a moment. So temperature anomalies for week one are above average. It's a mild average week coming up, especially so for England and Wales from the 3rd through to the 9th of April. Week two temperature anomalies are also above average. It's the 10th to the 16th of April. And that one, yes, is also coming out with above average temperature anomalies. So a warm first half to April, definitely. Things go a bit cooler in week three. This is the 17th to 23rd of April. We cool down to be close to, or possibly even hinting at being a little bit below average. That's as the wind sort of pulls round into uh, the northeast, perhaps. And week four is also looking quite cool. So this is the 24th to 30th of April, average to probably a little bit cooler than average. So quite interesting uh, month temperature-wise. Of course, April is a warming month in that... It should be one of those months that's getting rapidly warmer as the month progresses. But uh, what the CFS is showing is that the first half of the month is actually warmer than the second half of the month, which is somewhat unusual. And then uh, precipitation anomalies, finally. So this is the week one rainfall anomaly from the 3rd to the 9th of April. Uh, wet and average to the northwest of the country. Um, dry and average over England and Wales. That's more in line with what I'd expect from the 500 millibar height only that both the JMA and the CFS are going for. The JMA member wants to have all areas wet and average in this week. But I think the CFS is on the money there with um, more southern and east areas in particular being, uh, being drier. And then we go through to week two, which is the 10th to the 16th of April. That has near normal uh, precipitation anomalies. Week three is 17th to 23rd of April, and it's drier than average to the north and west of the country. Um, near normal precipitation elsewhere. And then no real signal at all for precipitation in week four, which is the 24th to the 30th of April. Just very, very close to average. So quite an interesting uh, JMA Friday this week. They are both uh, required anticyclonic, especially for the first couple uh, uh, of weeks. And the JMA does also want to extend that into the second 
part of the month as well. So we should have quite a lot of dry weather in this April, especially the first half of the month. There is, you'll have noticed, you've gathered uh, a discrepancy between the two models as we get through to the second half of April. Out of the two, I think the CFS is definitely both the cooler and the more unsettled um, solution, where the JMA looks like it wants to have a really quite an anticyclonic month from beginning to end. So a bit of a difference there, but certainly up to like the middle of April, we can expect a lot of high pressure, therefore a reasonable amount of dry weather, and at times it could be quite warm as well. I mean, question marks about what happens in the second half of the month. Remember, it's just a snapshot of what these models are showing. Uh, they can all look very different next week. Any long range forecast beyond five to seven days comes with a health warning. Uh, and, of course, we'll do it all over again next week, which will be Jeremy Good Friday, of course. Um, right, that's it for Jeremy Friday. We'll be back later on with your week's 10-day video update, so come back for that then. Uh, that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.